So in this video, we're going to go ahead and have our player, our red circle, moving from left to right. So go into our scripts folder. We're going to right click or hit create. And we're going to do a new C sharp script. We're going to name this C sharp script player. Go ahead and double click to open it up or select open. So when you double click that and open it up, it's going to open up in mono develop and you'll have basic code already written. So let's go ahead and start by putting in a few variables that we need. First of all, we need to reference the rigid body 2D that we placed or put onto the player. So you're going to type private and then rigid body 2D and you can see that it'll automatically pop up as you're typing. And then we're going to write our variable for this. So what I use, I use RB2D for rigid body 2D. And then we're going to follow that with a semicolon. A semicolon ends the line of code and tells the game to go on and move on to the next line of code. So now we have referenced our rigid body 2D with the variable rb2d. I'm going to go ahead and make a comment which is two forward slashes and then we can write our comment. So I'm just going to write what this line of code does. References rigid rigid body 2d. So now void start. Anything within void start occurs as soon as the game is played. So as soon as you start the game, anything within void start is executed. So we're going to have to get that component for the rigid body 2D. That's our first step. So we're going to use the variable rb2d. We're going to use an equal sign and then get component left arrow, rigid body, 2D, right arrow, open and close parentheses, and then end it with the semicolon. So now that we have our rigid body, which is where the physics forces are applied, set up, we need to take into account the position that our player will start at. That position is at zero, zero. Remember in our transform, x was 0 and y was 0. So we're going to say, set up a variable for start position. And that value is going to be the transform dot position, which will be the same once that program is started. You can see when you go into the player, the transform position is 0, 0. So, at that start, it's executed that the start position is going to be that same, 0, 0. Let's go back into mono development. Now this is red because we haven't said what a start position is. We made this variable, but we haven't defined the variable. We're going to go back up where we put our previous rb2d, and we're going to say, public, static, and we're going to say vector2, because it's a vector2 space since we're working in 2D, and that is going to be our start position. So the start position is defined as a vector2 space, so it's going to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate, which the transform dot position has, and it's applied into this start position. So on the start, we have our rigid body, and then we take into account the position of our player. Now we're going to want our player to move. And we want it to move using the left and right arrow keys. But this part of the code is not written in start. As soon as you start the game, you do not already have an arrow key pressed down. So we're going to write this in our update. Update is called once per frame. 
but we do not want it to be called once per frame. We want it to be called every physics step. So when we want to adjust what's happening to that rigid body. So as opposed to an update, we're going to use a fixed update. We define the types of variables up here. You can also define the type of variable within the line of code. A float, which represents a number, and that can be a decimal as well, as opposed to an integer, which would just be an integer. So we're going to use float, and then we're going to say move horizontal, because we only want to move in the x direction. We don't want to move in the vertical direction. So move horizontal, and we're going to set that equal to input dot get axis, and that's going to be horizontal. Now this seems a bit confusing at first, so let's go ahead and dissect this. We're getting a number, a numeric value, for the move horizontal variable. And that number is whatever this input is. So going up, so let's go ahead and find out what this input is. We're going to go back to our game, and we're going to go to Edit, and go down to Project Settings, and select Input. Now we said that input was going to be horizontal. So you can see that negative horizontal is the left key, and a positive would be the right key. You could also use A and D. So this is just setting up movement, saying that we're going to have a positive value going to the right, and a negative value for going to the left. So that move horizontal is taking in the input that we give it, either the right or left, and it's taking it in as a number, so positive or negative. So now we have a value stored into this move horizontal, depending on whether we're pushing down on the right arrow key or the left arrow key. Now we need to do something with that move horizontal value. Well, we're going to want to move the player or the rigid body associated with that player. So let's go ahead and comment this real quick and say it determines whether left or right arrow is pressed and stores that value. Let me go ahead and zoom in because this might be a little difficult to see. There we go. That should be a lot better. I apologize for not doing that sooner. Okay, so now we have some numeric value stored for move horizontal. So next, we need to apply that to the rigid body. So RB2D is the rigid body associated with the player, and the movement associated with that is going to be velocity. So RB2D dot velocity, and this is going to be a new vector 2. So we're going to type new. Vector 2. So vector 2, remember, has two coordinates, an x and a y. So our x coordinate, that's going to be our move horizontal. And our y coordinate is going to be 0, because we do not want it to move in the vertical. 0f is for the float. Go ahead and close that parenthesis and then end it with a semicolon. So now the velocity or the movement of this rigid body is a new vector 2, so it's a new x coordinate and a new y coordinate, y being 0, and our x being the value that we get when we push down the right arrow or the left arrow key. So save this script and let's go back into Unity. Now, if you hit the play button and try moving the player, nothing happens. That's because we haven't attached the script to the player yet. So if we select player, we can add the component by clicking add component. 
and going into scripts, and you'll see our player script. Go ahead and add that. You can also add it by selecting the player script within our assets, clicking and dragging it onto the player in the inspector. Either way, now when we run this, you can see that our player moves to the right and our player moves to the left. In the next video, we're going to go over speed, so moving the player at different speeds, and we're going to talk about what happens if you go over the edge.